Hey everyone, I'm the Canadian Lad and this time I have watched Spider-Man Homecoming at 0.25x speed and found 36 new details that you may have missed at regular speed. Now today's video is sponsored by Squarespace, the easy and reliable way to build a website. I'll talk more about it at the end. So without wasting any of your time, let's get into it. Number 1. The movie begins with Adrian Toomes aka Vulture and one of his co-workers studying a painting of the Avengers made by a child. Yeah, I'll tell you what though. Not bad, is it? No, yeah. Kids got a future. And in the next scene, just behind Herman Schultz, aka Shocker, we can see another drawing hanging on their fridge, which clearly is a painting of Hulk. So Marvel established it pretty early in the film that Vulture didn't really have any resentment towards the Avengers. Number 2. Remember this scene where Peter misunderstood Tony and thought he was giving him a hug? Of course you do, because we got another homage to this scene in Endgame. Anyway, that's not my detail, but focus on what Happy was doing in the background while Tony Stark was giving some advice to Peter. Happy's kind of your point guy on this, don't stress him out. Don't do anything stupid. I've seen his cardiogram. Pay attention to Happy. You can clearly see he's struggling to pick up the suitcase that contains the Spider-Man suit. You can even listen when Happy was grunting because of the weight of the suitcase. And definitely don't do anything I wouldn't do. And here you can see he's using both of his hands to hold the suitcase. Now all of this makes it very clear that the suitcase is heavy. But look at how Peter is holding it, literally with one hand and using the other to hold another bag. A great continuity detail that showcases the strength of Peter Parker. Now one might say this isn't really a big detail and here's my answer for you. I don't watch movies in slow motion to find big details. I do it so that I can come up with small details like this that no one really pays attention to. Number 3. In the subway, Peter was texting happy letting him know that he's available for the next mission. But if I zoom in, you can see Peter used the same photo of happy that he captured while he was sleeping on the plane at the beginning of the movie. Number 4. When Peter was watching a YouTube video instead of paying attention in his class, there's a link on top of that video as there should be. But guess what? This isn't any random or fake link. If we visit the link shown in the movie, it will literally take us to the actual trailer of Spider-Man Homecoming on YouTube. Thanks to Noah from Reddit who found this incredible detail two years ago. And that brings me to my next detail number 5. In this YouTube video that Peter was watching, we only get to see one comment that says fake. It's kind of funny how there are more than 500 comments but the only one Marvel chose to show us says fake. And now the last detail from this scene, number 6. The uploader of this video is Rocket Robinson 67. This is likely a reference to Robbie Robertson who debuted in The Amazing Spider-Man in 1967. Robbie was an employee at the Daily Bugle in the original comics. Number 7. I found an amazing detail from this bank fight scene. Notice how Peter's grippy hands remove the flooring as he tries to avoid getting thrown around. But he quickly thinks of an idea and sees there is concrete underneath the flooring. So this time he doesn't try to stick his hands to the flooring. Instead he goes for the concrete underneath which is solid and won't come off. Therefore this time he was able to stop himself from getting tossed around. This happened so quickly in the film that I don't even think I would have found it if I wasn't watching it in slow motion. Number 8. This bank robbers were dressed as fake Avengers. And I couldn't help but notice that Spider-Man was standing next to an advertisement that talks about identity theft. Identity theft is not a joke, Jim. Millions of families suffer every year. Number 9. When Peter lifts the lockers to get his web fluid, you can see unlike the other walls, that section is full of scratches, indicating that Peter constantly keeps lifting it up and down. Now I'm not the only one who noticed it. Someone from Reddit has also found this detail two years ago. So a big shout out to him. Number 10. During the scene when Peter's friends get stuck in an elevator at the Washington Monument, Spider-Man does a quick scan of the building. But notice we can actually see a red light constantly flashing in his lenses. So whenever he does any sort of scan or just receives a warning from the suit, his lenses actually flash red light from the outside as well. Now this detail may not carry as much of a significance, but it's a very minor detail that likely flew over a lot of people's heads. Plus, it shows the attention the VFX department puts into the suit and its functions. Number 11. We have always known how much effort Marvel puts into making the HUD display of Iron Man, and they didn't do any less for Spider-Man as well. Notice that Peter's heads-up display shows the amount of webbing Peter has left in his web shooters. Number 12. 
At the beginning of the film, Peter buys a pack of gummies from Mr. Delmars. But here comes an incredible detail. Notice the expiry date says March 16th, 2018, which is exactly when the first trailer of Infinity War was released on YouTube. Thanks to Joe for spotting this amazing little detail. Number 13. When Peter came to know his AI Karen records everything he does, he asked her to show footage from last Friday. So the AI starts showing footage of Peter impersonating Thor. But look at the heart rate of Peter Parker. When he gets embarrassed seeing that impersonation, his heart rate quickly jumps from 84 to 93. This is how it looks in regular speed. It is I, Thor, son of Odin. No, 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 that's definitely, no, that's definitely not. Number 14. When we see Peter and Nat for the first time in school, Nat was actually saying what time he will arrive at Peter's house. But Peter zones out by staring at Liz. And, and then I'll come by afterwards because for the most part, the difficult thing will be just the pace of it. This is why Peter didn't know Ned would be there in his room when he got caught as Spider-Man. Now, I'm not taking credit for this detail, because this was also found more than a year ago by Patrick, who shared it on Reddit. Number 15. Now that we know that Peter wasn't really paying attention in his class, but despite that, he was able to quickly answer a question just by having a glance at the whiteboard. Peter, you still with us? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh mass cancels out, so it's just gravity times sign. Right? Peter managed to give a proper answer because there was a pendulum arc's motion in the whiteboard, which is basically how he swings around using his web. And he used this exact motion to save his friends at the Washington Monument. So it just makes sense that he will know the answer without thinking too much. Number 16. After Peter stopped a thief from stealing a bike, he left a note saying don't steal this bike if this isn't yours. But notice the way he writes it leaves him with no room to write Spider-Man together as one word. And that's why he had to hyphenate it. Peter keeps doing it all the time where he has no space to write the word man next to the word spider and that's why he keeps hyphenating it and therefore staying very loyal to the comics number 17 in this scene while going to school ned has his backpack but peter is carrying his books on his hands it's because just in the previous scene peter told aunt may that he lost his backpack once again and that's why in the next scene he was carrying his books on his hands thanks to this user from reddit for finding out another continuity detail number 18 tony stark made a total of 576 combinations of webbing for Peter's suit. But notice one of them is apparently Venom Web. You really can notice it without slowing down the playback. And this detail kind of answers a question that Ned asked Peter at the beginning of the film. Can you spit Venom? Well, he may not spit Venom, but he can definitely shoot Venom webs. Number 19. When Vulture attacks Spider-Man for the first time and flies him into the sky, he's briefly seen in silhouette over the moon. This is an homage to Michael Keaton's other famous superhero film, Batman. Thanks to this user who confirmed this detail on Reddit over a year ago. Number 20. Towards the end of the film, Peter wears a t-shirt with an electron-neutron joke on it. But what's surprising is that Pepper Potts had a similar looking t-shirt in Iron Man 3. I just wanted to be like you. And I wanted you to be better. Hey, there's no inside joke there, and I want you to respect the fact that Tony totally bangs anyone who wears the t-shirt. Number 21. After Mark 47 saves Peter Parker from drowning, it was revealed in the middle of the conversation that Tony Stark is actually not physically there. But if you pay close attention, you can actually see the suit is holding a supposed glass because Tony is holding one in India. And also, this drone suit made this weird hand gesture indicating Tony was ordering a drink for himself. Number 22. While going to Washington for the quiz, you can see there's a diversion board for the cleanup of the Triskelion. Now, Triskelion is the name of the headquarter of SHIELD. So the fact that this movie has a diversion board asking the public to take a different route indicates that it's taking the government more than three years to clean up the mess because of the aftermath of Captain America the Winter Soldier. Number 23. When Spider-Man was trying to rescue his friends stuck in the elevator, his AI Karen says the elevator will collapse in exactly 125 seconds. You now have 125 seconds until catastrophic failure. What? Now what's surprising is the fact that it exactly took 125 seconds in real time as well as in the movie before the elevator collapsed on itself. Number 24. During the Captain America fitness challenge, MJ was reading a book titled Of Human Bondage, which is a story of an orphan boy sent to live with his aunt and uncle, just like the story of Peter Parker. And that brings me to my next detail 25. When all the students were doing different types of workouts, MJ can be seen bench pressing the same book while reading it. Number 26. When we as an audience get to see Peter in his school for the first time, if you notice in the background, 
background, Howard Stark can be seen painted on a mural celebrating great scientists and inventors. Number 27. When Aunt May drops Peter at Lisa's house for the party, we can see the license plate on her car. It says AMF1562. That's a reference to Amazing Fantasy 15th edition from 1962, which is the first appearance of Spider-Man and Aunt May in the comics. Number 28. When Spider-Man interrogates Aaron Davis, aka the uncle of Miles Morales, the license plate on Davis's car is a reference to Ultimate Comics Spider-Man Edition 1, which is Miles Morales' introduction as Spider-Man. Number 29. After coming to know Spider-Man's true identity, Ned kept on asking a bunch of questions. One of his questions was, how far can you shoot your web? To which Peter replies, he's not sure. Then Ned tells him, if I were you, I'd stand on the edge of a building and shoot it as far as it goes. How far can you shoot your webs? Shut up. Shut up. If I was you, I'd stand on the edge of a building and just shoot it as far as I Shut up, Ned. This might be a stretch, but this was probably a reference to Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man where he literally does the same thing. Number 30. While Peter and Ned visit the crime scene where the bank was almost destroyed, a canopy on the far right side displays the word Kravenov. This is a subtle reference to Kraven the Hunter, longtime enemy of Spider-Man whose real name is Sergei Kravenov. Number 31. Peter and Aunt May were having dinner at a Thai restaurant. Now the window next to it has a writing in Korean language which apparently means Charge of Asgard. Thanks to the holy shit for coming up with this detail a year ago. 32. When MJ was revealed to us, the audience, for the first time, a kid dressed as a tiger is seen running right through the middle of the frame. Now, for the fans of the comics, this is a lovely reference because MJ's nickname for Peter is Tiger. Go get him, Tiger. Also, when Flash was mocking Peter, there in the background, almost all the posters say, Go get him, Tiger. 33. We know that Damage Control from Stark Industries took over the operation from Adrian Toomes, but the name Damage Control also appeared on the first Iron Man movie. But we didn't see them in action until in this movie. 34. Peter's cell phone gets more and more damaged as the movie goes by, implying his jumps, falls, and fights, all of it make an impact on his phone as well. 35. When Iron Man comes to rescue Peter and saves the boat as well, his repulsors and additional boosters make a dent on the metal body of the boat. Thanks to this user from Reddit for noticing such attention to detail from the VFX department. Number 36. Now this detail has nothing to do with slow motion, but it's something that I observed. At the end of the film, Peter actually tried to save Tums because his wingsuit was about to explode. Your wingsuit! Your wingsuit's gonna explode! And after it finally explodes, Tums is no longer strong enough to fight Spider-Man. So he is basically nothing without his suit. Whereas Peter, even without the suit that Stark made for him, he was still able to stop Vulture. Hence proving that Peter is not nothing without his suit. He will always remain the Spider-Man whether he has a suit or not. Now as I said, this video is sponsored by Squarespace. So let me tell you a little bit more about it. Squarespace gives people the most powerful all-in-one online platform to create your own website without any prior experience. And with Squarespace's award-winning templates, creating a professional website is super simple. Start by choosing the category that best fits your plan, and then choose from one of the many professionally created templates to get started today. And if you get stuck trying to figure out how to do something, Squarespace has award-winning 24-hour customer support to help around the clock with anything you need. Well, maybe not anything, I mean, they're not gonna listen to your relationship problems, but they will definitely help you make an amazing website. So to get started with your own business, business or side hustle, go to squarespace.com forward slash the Canadian lad for a free trial and a 10% off on your first purchase. And that's it. This was my breakdown of Spider-Man Homecoming at 0.25x speed and I hope I was able to give you at least a few new details through this video. And some of the details I've taken directly from Reddit as those were really crucial to this film. Now if you like this video then please give me a thumbs up and grab the subscribe button if you haven't already and follow me on Instagram where I post updates about my videos. Till then I will see you later in the next one.